pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all of us. Okay. Okay, director of comments. Peter. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, just wanted to say that uh, Senior Canyon is still involved in in the FEMA grants repairs to our canyon and also the renovation of the tunnel, which is uh, still involved with permitting in that process. And the other thing on a personal note is I have stepped down as president and now I am vice president of Senior Canyon and Jim Jackson is taking my place. So that's a big change. That's probably a good move on your part. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good so far, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Jim, Conservation District. Nothing to report. Bob. Nothing from the community facility. I don't have anything from Casitas. Okay, next item. Still full? Still full, yes. Still yes. Do we keep 20, keep 20, topping it off. Give or take. General Manager comments. Hi, good afternoon. It's uh, been two months since we met because we uh, canceled last uh, month's meeting. So I wanted to give you an update. Um, I prepared a little outreach material. And I don't... I only have hard copies, Peter, so I'll email one to you. Maybe pass those around. Um, it's a little trifle brochure. So take a look at it. Give me some feedback if you'd like. Uh, I thought this could be useful to have for realtors if we decide to do some kind of a, an event, um, maybe you know, go to an Ojai Chamber of Commerce event or something like that. Um, I'm not a graphic designer, so uh, I did my best <laughs> with the skills that I have. Um, obviously, I would, if we wanted to move forward with something like this, I would get a quote from a printer to do it on, you know, nicer paper and things like that. That's just kind of a bare bones um, version of it. Yeah, it's good. It's excellent. I actually, I emailed it to an owner today because she said her sister had questions about it. So I'm like, oh, I just prepared this thing. Let me just shoot you a PDF real quick. And she texted me back like, this was great. It answered all her questions. Oh, good. So let me know what you think. Um, and like I said, we can use it if we decide to participate in an event or um, go from there. Okay. Um, it, it almost, we almost ought to just make it part of it it should be part of like an east end sale any sale it makes you think they ought to just have to acknowledge this because it has all the information yes yeah I, I don't know that you can make it but if they just if if it just became part of the package not that you can make it part of the package yeah well, we can certainly get some printed out and take them to the local realtors yeah Um, let me see. GSP related things. Um, I, the spring data upload was, is due July 1st. So I got the data that I needed from Jordan and uploaded that this morning. So we're in compliance with that. Um, there are a couple other things, but I think it's probably more appropriate to address them during the ad hoc committee updates. Okay. I think that's all I have for now. All right. Thank you. Is Jordan on Zoom? I seen him. Oh, Jordan said that he was going to be um, landing on a plane and asked me to do his presentation for him. And I'm trying to figure out how to get, if I can share my screen. Just use a word I don't understand and you'll do yeah. the presentation. <laughs> I don't know if, the, um, <laughs> if I get that off. Here, share screen. 
Please hold while I figure out technology. There we go, okay. He did not give me a script, so we'll just go through these slides together and see what he put together. So the title is A, S a Slow Drop Off the Table. It's a, looks like year-to-date um, totals. It's a little hard to read, but it looks like 38.46 up in the um, mountains here. We're still in leaving That's okay. Valley. No new rain. No. So it, tr this yeah. is true. That's it, okay. it has not rained. This that is probably the same as what it was. Yeah. Um, oh, here, look, they pop up. And and Julia, this is uh, this is Tim Becker, so I can chime in when needed. But yeah, as far as I understand from Jordan, is that he will hope to join later on, but is currently unavailable. Okay, great. Thank you, Tim. Here's our well uh key well readings you can see the latest one from yesterday it looks like still at 94 percent of capacity 75,200 acre feet of water in the basin l rodwell oh that must be what the uh, title of the presentation refers to it's the table is tapering off there yeah, so this would be presenting the raw logger data uh, from obviously now October 2023. So I mean, what you're seeing is, of course, the rise in January through late March after the wet winter. Uh, and then, you know, generally plateauing as you start seeing more of that, the sawtooth to the right that says, you know, temperatures have risen and now the well is being pumped and others in the area. And so now you're starting to see that taper off. Uh, but of course, we're still, you know, relatively quite hot. So yeah, as of yesterday, the depth to water in the Elrod well was about 61 feet below ground surface. Okay. Uh, um, Tim, um, yeah. if you're familiar with that, maybe you can answer a question for me. Sure. What level does the basin get to before it stops having aquifer activity on Gridley? Does it get to? 79,000, 75,000 acre feet. At what point does it just stop coming to the surface and running out? You're, in terms of when does artesian conditions subside? Is that the question? Yeah, based on our volume. Yeah, so uh, again, the, there is some balance in that, you know, this is now storage in the main aquifer and then some of the, you know, the artesian pressure is often in are perched zone. Uh, but yeah, I think in general, I, a lot of this is, I think what we'll be learning kind of in real time, you know, cause I don't think we've had this level of precision uh, in terms of, you know, loggers and various wells and, and just this quantity of data after uh, this, you know, wet of now back to back winters. So I think a lot of this will be that which we'll be learning in real time um, at least that I know that I can speak to, you know, this is certainly the most water that I have seen in Ojai. Uh, but I think, again, a lot of this is we, we filled it all the way up and now we'll start seeing, you know, while some artesian pressures remain, they are of course subsiding, uh, you know, generally dwindling. Uh, and yeah, you would expect at some point in the relatively near future, you would see, you know, basically the absence of water, you know, merging onto ground surface, but, um, I think the best answer that I would give is is we're going to be kind of learning it, you know, again, in real time and as, you know, as robustly as we've ever measured. Thank you. So, yeah, this is now as, you know, if you just want to yeah, keep clicking forward, Julia, uh, this will be showing the inflow coming into the basin as of yesterday where you'll have, you know, Reeves is still entering into the basin, but then it will quickly fully infiltrate. Uh, Thatcher also uh, enters into the basin. It actually reaches all the way to that dry confluence with Reeves, and then itself also infiltrates. And now San Antonio Creek, of course, uh, does not flow continuously across the basin. Uh, and so as we go yesterday, 
if you were to add up all of the surface water inflow uh, coming in from Reeves, from Thatcher, from Gridley, and from Senior Canyon, you're looking at about seven CFS coming in. And that's, of course, just at the surface. And then if you look at the outflow in that Montgomery V-notch, it's about 0 0.79 CFS. And then the main outflow exiting the basin at San Antonio Creek is about 19 CFS. So all told, the basin outflow and surface flow yesterday was a little under 20 CFS. What station is the uh, San Antonio Creek outflow? Is that it? Is that so a that it's not a it's not a station. That is, uh, you know, the transect that we manually establish, and it, it's in that uh, kind of the Skunk Ranch Road vicinity. So okay. you know, it's close to where the Montgomery V notch is. If you were to just go due south into the main channel area, there. You know, again, as of last January, the geomorphology you know, changed quite dramatically with all of the water. Uh, but, you know, since then, it's been, you know, in a fairly stable location in that main channel. And then that's where we've been, you know, we just established our transect there, uh, you know, again, in about the, the 15 minutes it takes me to measure it. Uh, but what all I'm doing is taking a tape measure and running it across laterally. And then in about half, every half foot increments, You'll measure the depth to water and then the linear velocity, the feet per second. So if you multiply the feet per second by the feet of the depth of water by the half foot of my measuring increment, you're given a CFS in that one increment. I add it all up together, and then that's what represents the full transect. So that's true for both the inflow and the outflow measurements. You know, I, I established the best location that the geomorphology allows at that time, but generally it's consistent from month to month. All right, I'm catching up on the slides here. <laughs> there we go. Yep, yep. There's the yep. aqua. Okay. Artesian, I should say. So yeah, this is just saying, you know, the Boardman well at, you know, Boardman at 150, artesian flow does remain again if you were to stand on the 150 bridge today you would have water flowing underneath you in san antonio creek but it starts just up gradient of that you know you can see the start of the lower san antonio creek flow segment when you're standing on the 150 bridge this is also showing the artesian flow that remains now in the the south central depth discrete monitoring well you know of that four wells that represent the full depth discrete cluster it's the shallow intermediate one the one that is that has the perforations from uh, i believe it's about 140 to 160 feet that has generally been flowing artesian um, you know fair, you know continuously since january of last year with the arrival of the rains the water level in the other wells that tap different aquifers is close to ground surface, but doesn't, you know, overflow at ground surface. So those levels are generally within about three to 10 feet of ground surface currently. This is a, just showing where Thatcher does still reach that confluence as it then banks west. Uh, but then it shortly thereafter infiltrates. This is also now Reeves, uh, again, where it does reach into the basin. Uh, but, you know, within about probably about 100 yards of this photo, uh, you know, that water, the flow terminates and the remainder of the channel is dry. The view of Thatcher Creek under McAndrew, McAndrew Bridge. And then this is now under Ladera Bridge. So this is Senior Canyon. Uh, so you know, just downstream of, stream of this, it merges with Gridley and it forms the start of San Antonio Creek. So you know, right now, this is you know, the main inflow of surface water that remains coming into the basin. 
So this is that start of San Antonio Creek. So this is just downstream of that Ladera Bridge where Senior Canyon would be the view to the right and Gridley is up upstream to the left. And then they merge effectively at this road crossing. Some water still crosses over the road. Some water goes uh, under it as it's captured uh, in a little catchment basin. This is the view just upstream of that now just showing Gridley. So again, you know, this would be the other main arm that then forms San Antonio Creek where Gridley and Senior you know, represent the bulk of surface water that is still entering into the basin. The view from Grand Avenue. So while San Antonio Creek forms, you know, at that Hermitage Road crossing and it flows past San Antonio uh, Creek spreading grounds. Shortly thereafter, it terminates. So that upper flow segment terminates. And so right now, the view from Grand is dry under at San Antonio Creek. Okay, now we're looking at the outflow side. So this is just that V notch showing that Montgomery outflow. And then this is the main basin outflow. So again, you're kind of in that Skunk Ranch Road uh, vicinity. You have to, you know, it's about, um, you know, probably a couple hundred yards to walk from where you park off of the road. Uh, and then, you know, this is a, about the same transect area that we've done ever since, again, about January 2023 when the geomorphology changed. But this represents, again, that about that 20 CFS of the surface water exiting San Antonio Creek. Uh, ultimately then to merge in, to, uh, merge in with Ventura River uh, much further downstream. Yeah, so again, some of these are a little out of order. Again, this is now just the start of that lower flow segment. So if you were just, a, you know, that's the 150 bridge downstream. So that is the start of the lower flow segment of San Antonio Creek, of which we the previous uh, photo would have shown the outflow leaving the basin downstream. That's just the view now upstream from uh, looking upstream from the 150 bridge. So, yeah, just, you know, about 100 yards up gradient there. You can see where the lower flow segment begins. You know, as we continue through the summer season, that will migrate southward. And, you know, generally it finds, you know, a point of stability where, you know, we'll typically have, uh, you know, that daylighting of lower of the lower San Antonio Creek. You know, somewhere in that Seoul Golf Park vicinity. Uh, but that's also what we monitor as part of our, our monthly uh, observations and measurements. As you were to continue down San Antonio Creek, uh, this is now just a, right before the merger with Ventura River as it crosses under Old Creek Road. And then this is now the actual confluence. Uh, you can see a great blue heron there up to the left. Uh, and so this is, you know, one of the main confluences of the Ventura River and San Antonio Creek. So, again, you from where Gridley and Senior merge, that would be the start of San Antonio Creek. It goes briefly underground as it passed, you know, at Grand Avenue, reemerges at, at the 150 bridge and then flows continuously to this point where it merges with the Ventura River. And that's that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from people online? Hearing none, we'll move to public comments. This is a time for comments on items not appearing on tonight's agenda. Any comments? Hearing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. The financial reports and the minutes of the April 25th meeting. Any questions or? No, all right. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Call the roll. Director Kenny? Yes. Director Yes. Can't hear you, CC. I'm sorry. Director Thilke? Yes. 
Chair Hages. Yes. Okay, item eight or discussion items. The first is a legislative ad hoc committee update. <coughs> So the legislative committee did not meet, but I did have a couple legislative updates that I wanted to provide. Um, one, I think I mentioned before, there was an Assembly Bill 2079 that was sponsored by Assemblymember Bennett. It failed to pass committee, and it was um, Sigma groundwater well related. Um, it, it purported to um, close some loopholes in Sigma about new wells being located near existing domestic wells. Um, it did not get support from um, Aqua, but there were some other, I think there were some agricultural, large agricultural interests who were opposed to it as well. So it didn't make it out of committee. Um, and I, maybe he'll try again at some point. Um, there was also a request from the small GSA coalition to send um, emails to legislators supporting the climate bond that's coming up with some specific language for um, small GSAs like us to get um, basically earmarked funding in that uh, bond. I had submitted some emails to um, Senator Ramon and I um, can't remember the other ones that they recommended. And then um, while I was out on vacation last week, Richard also sent um, an email out with the specific language that was requested in that bond. And then there is a small GSA coalition conference call tomorrow that I'll participate in. If anything comes up from that, I will let you know. Okay. Any questions or comments? All right, the next item is uh, meter compliance ad hoc committee. Uh, so that committee has not met lately either. Um, CC and I have been doing quite a bit of work on figuring out priorities. Um, there's, there's two major issues that I see. Um, one is wells that don't have meters. One are people who don't comply with submitting their quarterly reports. And then there are people with both, <laughs> both issues. They don't have meters and they don't. Um, file their statements. So I have been taking this list that CC provided me of people who haven't reported in a long time because I think that's the most egregious of the two um, and started, I developed a spreadsheet template with all of our rates and fees and when they went into effect and I literally take their files and look back to when the last time they reported and then create a whole spreadsheet by quarter showing what they owe. And I start with a phone call to let them know that they haven't paid. You know, do you have, is there some issue? Um, and then I follow up with a letter and Peter has been helping uh, with reviewing the letters and making sure there's language in there that references our ordinances and what the penalties could be for non-compliance. Uh, I've sent, I'm keeping track of that with a spreadsheet, of course, because that's who I am. Um, I've sent six of those letters out so far in the last month. So far, zero have responded. The initial phone calls that I make are, I, only one has not been hostile. The rest <laughs> have been very hostile. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, a challenge. Um, but we have the authority to do it. Um, I'm going to work with Peter to develop what our next steps are going to be um, once we send these out and we don't get responses. We need to take further action, basically. Um, I think there's going to be a process where um, they get, we present it to the board as a hearing. You know, we send them a letter saying that we're going to, you know, um, impose these penalties which I think are $500 fine and then $1,000 per day. And we can notify them that there's a public hearing coming up and they can present their case and then the board can take action on whether they want to impose those penalties and fees. So I think that's where it's going to go over the next couple months as I dig into this. Um, similarly, with those who don't even have meters, uh, we have a list of those and we're going to develop a letter to send out and give them a time frame of when they need to get their meters installed. 
And again, if we get no responses, we'll have to take it up a notch and um, get people in compliance. Yeah, and taking it up a notch means holding a public hearing with your board, you know, 30 days notice, advance notice to the delinquent well owner, and then your board deciding what sort of penalty uh, it wants to enforce within the limit of its penalty authority. But, you know, at $1,000 a day, uh, you know, that can get pretty steep pretty quick. So um, uh, once the penalties assessed, if they still are non-compliant, then the next level beyond that to escalate this would be uh, to go to court and enforce the penalty, essentially get the court to issue a judgment uh, and then lien their property. Um, we haven't looked at, we don't have at this point the ability to immediately lien their property without going to court uh, to get authority to do so. Uh, so that's something we could look at, investigate, but uh, uh, right now our penalty authority under the enabling legislation uh, requires public hearing, assessment of the penalty, and then the next step is going to court. And if, you know, we, we need to start going there with some of these folks, I, it seems to me that we could get a pretty abbreviated procedure, uh, you know, pretty good at just going to court and, and um, you know, the paperwork's standard paperwork and just sort of fill in the blanks depending on what the different circumstances are and, you know, move, move through those steps. So, um, uh, but that's effectively what we're looking at if, if the agency wants to uh, go after these folks. <coughs> And some of the spreadsheets that have been done, they owe quite a bit. They're in the thousands, right. mm -hmm. yeah. And if they have multiple wells, then it, it adds up pretty quickly also. So, um, you know, I have a stack, and I'm just chipping away at the stack. What kind of, what kind of uh, feedback do you get when you contact them? Um, <laughs> or a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Theirs or mine? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no. Um, most of the time, it's like, I don't see why I need to pay these, and I'm not going to pay them. You know, what are you going to do about it? Oh, okay. Well, that it's a challenge then. Kind of. Yeah. Oh, that, <coughs> the one woman that yes. was last month, she said, I'm moving, and do what you want. I don't care. I'm not paying these. I'm selling my house and moving. Yeah, and that concerns me that we can't lean these things when they're leaving. Two things concern me. One concerns me, and I'm sure you're doing it, but I'm just going to bring it up because I'm going to feel better, um, is that we research and see if any of these properties have changed hands recently. You know, we've heard, don't know who's in charge, don't know who's running it, don't know where the owner is, can't find anybody. So if, if somebody has changed, and, and until we got out of the insurance business recently, um, we would have people come and it would be literally um, an accountant in Beverly Hills somewhere that would be you know, in charge of running everything and you wouldn't have any contact with the owner and so there was no way. But it would be interesting to see if a, a number of these delinquencies are fairly recent turnovers in ownership. Well, um I think not because uh, a lot of the, the new owners bought from people that had been farmers, ranchers for a long time and stayed up with it. It's getting the new information and we are tracking, we are getting a um, contact and um, so it is. And I do some have some resources at my disposal where I can look and see when a property to see if the information we have is the current owner. And that just happened um, this week with one of them that on Reeves Road, where we thought it was someone and it was sold in 2022. And, and so that's now, exactly what yeah. I'm talking about. So now I do have the new owner information. And she's like, I, I knew there was something I needed to do, but I didn't know what. So now I can send her all the information she needs and she can get caught up. Is there a way to be able to get the authority to lean 
prior to going to court, prior to letting this thing out, something where it's fairly immediate, where it's like, hell with you, I'm, I'm selling next month, and you're going to have to talk to the new owners, because we're going to lose that one. We're not going to be able to enforce the new owners on the prior owner's water use. So I don't know how expensive it's going to be, but I'm just wondering what we would need to adopt rather than go to court all the time. I think Understood. just putting the lien and saying, hey, it's a thousand bucks, um, you can come to the hearing, but coming to the hearing, dragging them to court and doing all these things, it's kind of like, we're gonna make some pretty uh, visceral enemies along the way. At this point, we don't have the authority to just go and have a lien put on the property without, that's not one of our enforcement authorities under our enabling legislation. Um, so I need to look at, you know, what it's going to take to get that to, you know, is it as simple as the agency adopting an ordinance to that effect? Um, uh, or is it something, for instance, the county would need to do adopt an ordinance at the county level? Or is it something that we need to go back to the state legislature and try to get them to do and we'll, you know, right. go back to Bennett and have them tax something on a bill? Uh, that's right but at this point you know we do have enforcement authority and in order to you know if if as this goes gets escalated you know up up the chain if if we're not able to get compliance you know our recourses with the court getting a court order and um, uh, you know having the court step in and assist. How, how timely and expensive is that well, that, that's, that was my point earlier. I mean, probably the first couple times it might be, it's gonna be more expensive, but once this becomes a rote procedure, now we got, you know, it's it's something that can be done pretty easily. It seems to me like I give it to some uh, younger person uh, in my firm who, uh, you know, can handle that stuff and at a lower fee and, you know, we, we, we do it. But I think it's worth investigating, you know, if we are able to get uh, uh, you know, a, a penalty assessment or a fee assessment, you know, on put on the tax rolls. Um, and I, I just don't know at this point in time what that, what that is going to take to get that authority so we can do it. But hopefully just going through the motions and holding the uh, hearing gets us a lot of them. And then maybe there will have to be a few that take it. And then hope, unfortunately, hopefully it the word gets out that they do have the authority and then it's this conversation is much easier they uh, are sitting up here they us yes they obgma they yeah no it's it's obgma well it may be an article in the paper about that too But also on the liens, the liens to stay with the property until the property sold again, right? right? And so what the county does now is, <coughs> excuse me, they put a non-compliance on the property. They send out an annual usage statement, which isn't it's every five years. But then they, if people respond, and they're saying they're not pumping, they can put a non-compliance. And with the, um, the Calvin Zara permit, there was a, um, a non-compliant filed with the, uh, with the title company. And he bought it even though it had that with that. Calvin and Zara bought the property, you're saying? with that on and then he cured it or did you he know? said I don't remember seeing that with all the paperwork but um, then he, he was he sold it and apparently the other person took care of it or accepted it, it too it with the non-compliant yeah it well, had to be cured in order to transfer no. to clear title no not if you say okay oh that's like it's just a warning label okay a, I'd want a real lien that had to be paid. Well, I... It, yeah, so there's just more to come there. Yes. So look for that maybe on the next um, next month's agenda. We'll have maybe a, a process or something put together that we can share. 
Yeah, one of the things I think we consider, I don't know if the county has the authority or we'd have to go to the state legislature or whether we do, but do something similar to what the county does with uh, sewer laterals. You have to do an inspection when you, when you, as part of escrow. And if the sewer lateral is faulty, it has to be replaced and it's on the, it's on the seller. I think it's the entire county. I may be wrong, but if we can do something like that, where there's a requirement for the inspection, because that way we get information on what it is, whether it's active or not, whether it's got a meter. Well, and how did everybody figure out they had to do the sewer lateral? Well, it goes through. It, it was in the, the escrow, escrow instructions. In the escrow. Yeah, it's not. I don't think so. In the city, it is. Yeah, I know. Well, I know the first one that got caught, he was a realtor selling one of his properties. Um, I would think, and tell me where I'm naive, why in the world wouldn't it be in the health department's best interest or whatever agency to do an inspection on these things and see what these wells look like and that they're not abandoned and that they're not subject to pollution or have a hazard or other things. It would just appear to me that these things, I mean, if they want to close the petroleum wells, I would think that the water wells would, should be given even more uh, scrutiny and attention. They do have well, um, water well drillers go out and look at the wells, but we don't get the information. Who, who? A realtor who's representing the realtor. a property. Yeah, I'm talking Only about it. Only they want to. Yeah. Agency. Yeah. Part of the it's not required. Yeah, I think we just, the main thing is we just proceed down this path in the short term. But I think really, if we just go down this path a few times, they, OBGMA, us, we're just gonna go down. I yeah. love your optimism. <laughs> And Julia, did you have a number of people that we may need to be contacting over time? Uh, For either like no reporting, no paying, or no meter? This looks like about 20-ish. Multiple rows. The other thing is if we could offer some kind of amnesty on a percentage of it unless they want to go to court, then we go with penalties and everything. So it gives them some incentive to come in and What I've been say doing uncle. is, you know, <laughs> using that spreadsheet to calculate what they owe. Um, if there's some kind of policy you want to establish where there's, you know, or they can come and appeal it to the board, some kind of appeal process where you give them leniency, that's entirely up to you. Um, I'm just telling them what the whole enchilada is there's one in you there's one in united right now where they use the wrong meter factor over decades oh. and it's one point odd million ouch yeah. hmm. so you know where that gets negotiated probably because yeah. they were trying right and they had multiple wells and I don't know if they flip. I don't know what the story is, but I've just heard. Off a decimal place yeah. or two. <laughs> Probably two to be at those numbers. Okay, anything else? And we are adjourned. At Richard, can I say something? You didn't ask for public comment. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Earlier. Yeah, I've been, I've been following this stuff for quite a while. This is Bert Handy, by the way. Um, and Brian Bondi's got both the Mound Basin and the Upper Ventura River GSA has been dealing with this. He's got his presentations at the meeting. He's got all the forms set up. He's got a procedure for it. He's got everything. You've got somebody right in your own neighborhood that you're actually seeing people who live in the Ojai Valley are dealing with what he's setting up and also in the Mound Basin. That might be something you want to look at as a procedural way. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anything else? Okay, we're adjourned.
do you know? Um, just lost it. Um, Totem, who bought uh, Jerry's? He got caught up, but he's now behind again. <laughs> yeah, he it, it, yeah he's resistant to the you know the new fees and everything. Yeah, that's how they I saw Frank talk to him the other day. Did you? He looked good. Did he? He was relaxed. Okay. Yeah, no, it's Bob. Oh, yeah. I know. He's sick of it. I don't know. Why did you just talk to him again? Yeah, for some reason, I did. Why did you talk to him? He has one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 